I have waited years to make this video. Listen up, keyboard warriors. These are all of the headlights you said are the best. This one's the best, and then you guys drool over that brand. Well, in this video, I'm going to truly find out which one is best. And believe me when I say it, it's not the bulb you put in the comments below. Now I'm gonna compare all of these bulbs to your stock halogen bulb. Every single one of these bulb types are an H11. I've got Oxbeam Q30. You guys suggested the C-Light Scopark headlight. We're gonna compare the SV4. We also got the Farin Termidor, not Tumorator. Termidor. <laughs> we got the two-stroke 4.0, the Sylvania LED bulb, the very popular Hikari bulb, Beam Tech, a GTR Lighting Ultra 2 bulb, and the all-new GTR Lighting Ultra 3 bulb. Now you're not completely wrong. A lot of the manufacturers out there have caught up. They have created a bulb that's actually good and actually good putting on your vehicle. If you've got one of these two headlights or one of the 50 to 100 other headlights that use a halogen bulb and you wanted to upgrade with an LED bulb, there's a lot of really good options out there. But which one's the best in this video you're gonna find out. The bulbs are no longer made like this. This is a multi-sided LED bulb. Thankfully, they've caught on. They have the LED chips in the correct spot to replicate that wire wound filament found in the halogen bulbs that you're trying to replace. They do a good job. They put the light source where they need and you often get a good beam pattern that's pretty bright. This is trash. If you're still finding this and you're trying to buy it for $29.99 on Amazon, don't. This is trash, I'm gonna chuck it. I hope that thing breaks because I'm sick and tired of seeing it. Same with this. The bulb is not multi-sided. However, there's two sides with a really big chip that just doesn't replicate your wire wound filament in your halogen bulb. All of these brands that you guys have suggested did. The build quality seems to be pretty on par with what we want to see in the best LED bulb out there. Except for this one right here, what is it, C-Light? I wanted to show you guys, this was pretty funny. And this is not me just fat fingering it. I was just trying to install it in the vehicle and the wiring just kind of popped out there. It still works. Other than that, build quality on all of these bulbs seem to be pretty on par. Now there's a lot of haters that say you can't put an LED bulb in a projector housing. And I have to say, you're probably living a decade ago, because yes, you can. You can definitely put an LED bulb in a projector housing, still get a very bright and good beam pattern. Just make sure you get the right bulb. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to back this table up from the wall, and I'm just gonna power up every single one of these LED bulbs, starting with the projector headlight. This looks like a fifth generation Forerunner. You should see similar results with the projector. Every single one of these headlight housings produces a different light output, a different beam, a different intensity of light. So just take this with a grain of salt. What I'm trying to do is just compare one headlight to another. So here's how we're gonna do the test. I've got a digital lux meter here. We're gonna measure the actual usable brightness at a certain point. We're measuring the max intensity at a certain point. I've got this headlight, it's one headlight, the passenger side headlight on the table connected to a power supply. I'm just gonna install one bulb after another to show you guys what low beam looks like out of all of these LED bulbs. We're trying to find the brightest, and we're trying to find the one with the best beam pattern. We want something that replicates your stock halogen light, so let's get started. This is what your stock halogen bulb looks like. Pay close attention to the coloring. As you can see, this has got that dingy yellow looking color. It's probably why you're upgrading these lights in the first place. I measured with a digital lux meter, 274.4 maximum lux. This is the benchmark. We're gonna compare the rest of these to this. First bulb I installed is the Oxbeam Q30. Right off the bat, you're gonna notice this light output looks like garbage, and honestly, just between you and I, it's because I could hardly get this thing to fit inside of this housing. The listing literally said that it fits 99.9% .9 of the headlights out there. Apparently, this is the 0.1% of headlights that it doesn't really fit. I don't know if you just need to take a hammer to it, but I cannot get Oxbeam to fit in this fifth generation 4Runner headlight. It's also not adjustable, so it is what it is. I also only measured 142.6 maximum lux, which means that it is less bright than your stock halogen. The C-Light Scopark looks like this. I have really high hopes, because the beam pattern is pretty good. I measured 571 maximum lux, but it's not super wide. Notice that, notice the width, notice the color. You got the bright white color in comparison to that stock halogen, but I think we can do better than this. Here is the SV4 bulb. I measured 548 maximum lux. 
As you can see, the hotspot is pretty big. It's bigger than the sea light hotspot. That's gonna give you that really bright punch of light down the road. It's gonna allow you to see a little bit more. Here is the Farron Termidor. I measured 529 maximum lux. It's got a great beam pattern, really, but it's not super bright. Here is the two-stroke 4.0 bulb from Morimoto. I measured 462 maximum lux. It's got a very controlled hotspot. Now, a lot of you are gonna say, well, this looks like garbage compared to what I just saw. This bulb was specifically designed to put the light in a certain spot so you don't illuminate the foreground too much and then blind you. If you had a good set of fog lights, I think this is still a really good output. This is the Salvania headlight installed in this Forerunner housing. Honestly, I struggled a little bit getting it to fit, but it does fit. It is not bright though. I measured 294.8 maximum lux. Hikari, this is what it looks like. Notice the subtle color changes. We've got 471 maximum lux. That's quite a bit, but I also noticed that it loses brightness very quickly. I measured every single one of these with the lux meter five minutes after being on. These LED bulbs lose brightness over time. The one that loses the least amount of light is actually the two-stroke 4.0. If I would have left these on for 15 minutes or 30 minutes and then measured it, the lux would have been substantially different than what you see here. Now this one is Beam Tech. I was super impressed with Beam Tech when it comes to the light output. I measured 611 maximum lux. The only real issue I had is that that adjustable collar on the Beam Tech bulb actually got loose and it got stuck inside of the housing when I tried to pull it back out. I had to use a needle nose pliers to remove that collar to get the next bulb in it. It may be bright, but maybe that means that the build quality isn't very good. Still, it's the brightest thing that you've seen so far. This is the king of bulbs, the GTR Ultra 2. This has been my favorite bulb for what, seven years now? And it does a very good job in almost every single application of being one of the best bulbs on the market. It still is to this day. As you can see, the competition has caught up. It is no longer the brightest. It still produces one of the best beam patterns, but I measured 596 maximum lux. I threw it in this shoot up because I wanted to just show you how much better the GTR Lighting Ultra 3 bulb is. Right away, when you power this up, you're probably thinking, what's with the color temperature? The color temperature is at a 5,750K color. It is a very comfortable light when you're driving long distances. This is going to keep you from eye fatigue. It's also extremely bright. Hopefully you're sitting down for this one because I measured 928 maximum lux. No, I'm not messing with you. It is hella bright. GTR Lighting did a very good job with the build quality. They made it much smaller, yet it still packs this massive punch. I have to simply say it, the king of bulbs keeps its crown and every single thing else out there does not even compare. So now I got this Ram headlight housing. This is what your stock halogen lights look like out of this reflector headlight housing. I measured 482 maximum lux. It's not super bright. It's also that dingy yellow color. The beam pattern's there. Thankfully, it's not scattering the light all over like some of those multi-sided bulbs do. When you install the aux beam, this is what it looks like. I measured 1,431 maximum lux. I then installed the C-Light, and it looks like this. I measured 1,228 maximum lux. The SV4 bulb, I measured 1,308 maximum lux. Ferrant was 1,464 lux, the brightest out of all of those I just said. Here is the two-stroke 4.0 bulb from Morimoto. I measured 819 lux. This bulb is adjustable, so I probably could have gotten a little bit more maximum lux out of it, but still it produced one of the best beam patterns. The Sylvania bulb was actually half the brightness of the two-stroke 4.0 bulb. I measured 412 maximum lux. The Hikari light came out of the gate swinging at 1,539 lux, the brightest that I have seen until I installed the Beam Tech. The Beam Tech I measured 1,907 maximum lux. After installing it twice now, that collar definitely just spins. I cannot get this back out of the headlight without then using my pliers to remove the collar. Here is the GTR Lighting Ultra 2 bulb. I measured 1,420 maximum lux. And look at that beam pattern. It still was really good. This was the best bulb for its time when it came out. The Ultra 3, the replacement GTR Lighting bulb. I measured, are you ready? 
2,345 maximum lux, and those numbers were absurd. My first initial measurement was 2,550 maximum lux after five minutes of saturation, and I figured nobody would believe me, so I waited another couple minutes and measured 2,345. When you do these tests at home, your numbers may vary a little bit, but just check out the percentage change. The percentage change is what you really want to look for. That would be very similar to the numbers you may get when you're doing this at home. Just remember, LED headlight bulbs are not street legal in the USA, and we advise you to not drive with these installed on public roads. In off-road settings, these are fine to use, but using bulbs this bright on the street may be uncomfortable to other drivers. There's no script when I'm making this video. I'm simply passionate about finding the best lights for every single vehicle, for every single headlight application, and I think we truly did that. The GTR Lighting Ultra 3 is the reigning king. It kicked everybody else's butt when it comes to beam pattern, color temperature, in my opinion, build quality. It's really small, it fits in almost everything now. It's even smaller than the Ultra 2, which was still able to fit in pretty much everything. And of course, the brightness. But maybe you have a different reason that one of these is still best, and I want you to put it in the description below. Maybe it is color temperature, and you really like a cool blue LED bulb, even though it's not bright at all, and it doesn't keep you safe when you're driving down the road. Or maybe you like another one because you simply sell that product on your website. Whichever one is your favorite, just make sure you get the right bulb size when you're going to upgrade from your original stock halogen bulb. If you have a stock halogen H11 bulb, get an H11 sized LED bulb. If you have a 9005, 9006, an H11, whatever bulb size it is, make sure you get the right replacement LED bulb. If you don't know what size to get for your vehicle, just type in your year, make, and model of the vehicle that you own on headlightrevolution.com We'll see you guys over there. If it's on our website, it's worth putting on your vehicle.